Right, let's look at representing images in binary. Specifically, the type of image we're looking at is a bitmap, which is stored as an array of individual pixels, a 2D array in practice, so columns and rows of pixels. And another type of image is a vector image, but the actual process is quite different to this, so we won't go into it in this video. So what is a pixel? A pixel is an individual picture element, that's where pixel comes from, picture element. And there's no definitive definition really, but it's basically the smallest distinguishable feature of an image. So monitors, also known as VDUs, like a visual display unit is the technical term, they're divided into rows and columns of pixels, so a colour will kind of take up a single pixel, and we don't divide it any further. And as you will have seen, the size of an image or a monitor can be expressed with pixels in the form width and height, so width times height. And this can also be referred to as the resolution of an image. So resolution really is all about detail an image holds, so kind of a density of pixels. So resolution, again, there are a few measures of what this is. It can be written like this, for width of times height in pixels, or it can be in terms of things like PPI, pixels per inch, or dots per inch. So a few measures, but really it's all about the detail an image holds. Here you can see some settings from my computer with the resolution in terms of the pixels and width times height and also colour depth which we'll look at in a second and also you can get resolutions in terms of pixels per inch. I think this is from Photoshop so it varies, um, the, the measure of resolution does vary. So to actually get an image in the first place in a camera uh, to hugely simplify the process effectively a grid is placed over an image um, with each box representing a pixel. So an average colour is then found for each pixel and a, bi and a binary value is assigned to this colour so a, a colour will have a unique binary value, a shade of a, a colour. So clearly for black and white this is very simple, it can just be there are two options, so it's either going to be 0 or 1, so it could be 0 for white, it could be 1 for black, but it doesn't actually matter which way around it is. But for colour it's more complicated, each pixel is going to be represented by multiple bits to represent more than two colours, so it's one combination per shade. And the number of bits each pixel has to represent a colour is called the colour depth or bit depth. So for black and white this is just one, a colour depth of one, it's only one bit used. But if we had a colour depth of three we can represent up to eight colours because two to the power of three is eight. So a larger colour depth allows us to represent more shades uh, and different colours. The computer will know that six and binary is blue, one is black, zero is white and two is yellow. So it will just know that that's um, the value associated with that colour so it can recreate the image. To look at this visually, we've got three different images with three different colour depths. The first has got four, second, eight, third, twenty-four. So the first image here, which is very, very grainy, it's pretty much black and white. This has only got sixteen colours in this whole image because there are only sixteen colours we can represent with four bits, two to the power of four. So it's not very good quality. With eight, it's actually quite a lot better. So we have two hundred and fifty-six colours here. This represents the main colours that most images have I suppose, but if you went all the way, all the way up to 24, which due to the nature of exponential growth is about 17 million colours, so a huge increase, this is pretty close to the actual image, because all the subtle greens and so on can be represented. Clearly this has a drastic increase in file size, so there is always a downside to increased quality. On that theme then, if you increase the resolution and or the colour depth, you do get a better quality image, but this increases the file size, and to work this out, you can it's a very intuitive formula for width in pixels times the height in pixels times the colour depth in bits which makes sense so basically for resolution times the colour depth because for each pixel we've got to assign however many bits the colour depth is to it in reality it's mostly going to be in well kilobytes and megabytes perhaps but in bytes you can just divide by 10 because there's 8 bits in a byte and divide this for a thousand for kilobyte and number thousand for megabyte and so on on this subject about file sizes, it's worth mentioning metadata, which is really important in loads of aspects of computer science, but this is data about data, so we need to store this alongside the raw image data, basically the array of pixels, and we need it to display the image properly. The computer needs some other details in order to actually show you the image on your screen and process it. So a few of these kind of required metadata attributes are things like the file name, the file format, and that's true for any files, but in images specifically we have colour depth we need to know about and the resolution. Because it needs to know, first of all, what kind of size of the image is going to be, and it needs to know kind of when a pixel is finished, so if a colour depth is 2, it knows for every second pixel it needs to change colour and so on, so it needs to basically use the information to format the image to display to you. And there are other kind of non-required metadata attributes, including things like camera detail, so apertures and the make of a model and so on, which can be used by applications but will increase the file size marginally. It's not going to be a huge difference, but it's not required. You don't need this for images. If you if the size was completely a premium, you wouldn't add all this extra metadata.